In this video, I'm going to show you step by step how to calculate the resultant force and moment acting on an object. We'll do a 2D example and a 3D example. Let's start by establishing that the resultant force and the resultant moment comes down to these two equations here. The resultant force is equal to the sum of forces, and the resultant moment is equal to the sum of moments about the origin, point O. In this example, we're asked to find the resultant force, and we're asked to find the resultant moment about point O. Sometimes it's phrased as the resultant couple moment about point O, but it's the same thing. Let's start with the resultant force. To do this, we'll break each force into their respective x and y components. We're then going to define our positive x and y directions. For the x component, we're going to define right as positive, and for the y component, we're going to define up as positive. Of course, you can define the opposite directions as positive if you want, as long as you stay consistent in your calculations. Okay, let's look at the x component. The 6 pound force at the top has a horizontal component that is equal to 6 pounds times cos 30. Since it points to the right, it's going to be positive. The 5 pound force below it does not have an x component. So let's move to the 5 pound force beside that. It has an x component that points to the right, so it will also be positive. Our resultant x component is 8.196 pounds. We'll do the same thing for the y component. The 6 pound force points up, so it will be positive. The 5 pound force below that points downward, so it will be negative and the five pound force beside that also points down, so it will also be negative. The resultant y force is negative six, so it points downward. To get the resultant force on the system, we would just take the Pythagorean theorem on both components, and then that would give us approximately 10 pounds. And then the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna find the angle, which is just gonna be the arc tangent of negative six pounds over 8.196 pounds, and that will give us negative 36.2 degrees. The negative sign just means that's going to be 36.2 degrees below the x-axis. We can also write our answer as a Cartesian vector by writing the x component and then writing a lowercase i after it and then writing the y component with a lowercase j right after it. Cartesian vector form will be especially important in 3D which will make our calculations easier for us. Okay, so let's do the resultant moment now. We know that the resultant moment about a point is this. Now since this is 2D, we're not going to explicitly calculate the cross product r cross f, even though that's technically what we're doing. Now let's define which way is going to be positive. In this case, we'll choose counterclockwise. Now to calculate the resultant moment, here's the big thing we need to keep in mind. There are five force components. There's the horizontal component of the six pound force. There's the vertical component of that force. Then there's this force here, which is just a vertical component. Then there's the vertical component of this five pound force. And then there's the horizontal component of that force. So this means that when we calculate the resultant moment, we'll be taking the sum of five terms. That is, this vertical force times its perpendicular distance to the origin, plus this horizontal component times its perpendicular distance, plus this vertical force times its perpendicular distance, plus this vertical force times its perpendicular distance. And finally, this horizontal component times its perpendicular distance. And in doing so, we get this, which gives us negative 6.16 pounds feet. The negative sign means we have a clockwise moment. Okay, now let's do a three-dimensional example. Here, we have a pole with two cables attached to it. The first cable pulls on the pole with a force of 300 newtons, and the second cable pulls with 500 newtons. To find the resultant force, it's much easier to write the individual forces as Cartesian vectors first. As you can see, the forces aren't given in Cartesian vector form. Instead, we have the magnitude and the directions they're pointing. We can easily convert to Cartesian vector form by multiplying the forces by their unit vectors. And here's how. Let's start with F1. F1 points down 7 meters, then 4 meters in the negative y direction, and then 3 meters in the positive x direction. So we will write 3i minus 4j minus 7k. And just to clarify, the 7 is negative because it points downward on the z-axis. Divide that by the magnitude and then multiply by 300 newtons. Doing the math will give us the following vector. 105i minus 139j minus 244k. Now what about F2? Well, we'll do the same procedure. F2 goes down 7 meters on the z-axis and 6 meters on the y-axis. So our unit vector will be 6j minus 7k divided by its magnitude. Then we'll multiply by 500 newtons and then simplify. This will give us the vector 325j minus 380k. So now to get the resultant force, all we do is we add those two vectors and we get the following vector. 105i plus 186j minus 624k. 
Okay, so how about the resultant moment? Now this should be the hardest part, but it'll actually be kind of easy because our forces are in Cartesian vector form. You just have to know how to calculate a cross product, and I'll link a video here for you to look at if you don't already. I'm just going to change the color of F2 to orange here so that it's easy to differentiate in the calculation. We're going to write our moment equation which states that the resultant moment about point O is equal to the sum of moments about point O, which is to say the sum of R cross F. Let's go ahead and write that down a little bit more descriptively. Now let's put in our table for R1 cross F1. Now let's put in R1. What exactly is R1? Well, it's the distance from the origin to where the force F1 is applied. As you can see, it goes straight up 7 meters on the z-axis from the origin. It has no x or y direction, so R1 will be 0, 0, 7. Then we'll put in our vector for F1, which we previously calculated to be 105i minus 139j minus 244k. Okay, now let's do our next cross product. Let's find out what R2 is. Well, in this example, it just happens to be the same as R1. Then we'll put in F2, which we previously calculated to be 325j minus 380k. Then, computing both cross products and taking the sum of them gives us the following. Negative 1302i plus 735j newton meters. And that is our resultant moment. But, I'm going to show you a way to get this that's twice as fast as what we just did now. Notice how in this example, both F1 and F2 act on the same point on the pole. When this happens, that is, when more than one force acts on the same point, we can replace all those forces with one single resultant force in the cross product. And since we're calling the resultant force FR, we'll put in R cross FR. And doing our calculation will give us negative 1302i plus 735j newton meters. And as you can see, it's the same as the previous calculation. And this means we only have to do one cross product. And that's how it's done. That is how to calculate the sum of forces and moments step by step.